Culture and Science Introduction The Indian culture is a very ancient culture. It spreads over a vast geographical area. Every period, every dynasty and every rulers influenced this culture. There is unlimited variety and diversity in our cultural heritage. Literature The Indian literature is very rich and old as compared to the literature of any other country in the world. Vedic literature The word Veda means knowledge. The Vedas were written by the Aryans. Vedic literature has four Vedas, the Rig Veda, the Sam Veda, the Yajur Veda and the Atharva Veda. The Rig Veda is regarded as the oldest script of the world. The Vedas and associated texts. The Vedas are the earliest literary works that we have. The Rig Veda is the oldest Veda. It was composed about 3500 years ago while other vedas were composed between 3000 and 2500 years ago they contain hymns in praise of different gods and goddesses these hymns were passed from one generation to the next orally until they were written down much later apart from the vedas many other important religious books like the brahmana the upanishads and the puranas were collectively known as vedic literature the brahmanas along with the vedas there are a series of texts called brahmanas these are the commentaries on the vedas each veda has a separate brahmana the upanishads there are 108 upanishads they discuss about life after death many upanishadic thinkers believe that there was something permanent in the universe that would last even after death they describe this as the atman the puranas puranas literally mean old there are 18 puranas these are sacred literature they contain stories about gods and goddesses they also tell us about the creation of the world the universe the puranas were written in simple sanskrit and meant to educate the common folk puranas were meant to be heard by everybody including women and shudras who were not allowed to study vedas law books or smritis were also written such as the manu smriti which laid down laws for society the sanskrit grammarian panini wrote the ashtadhyayi panini a masterful study of sanskrit grammar the sutras in course of time special schools of thought came into existence for a systematic study of the various branches of vedic knowledge those schools evolved special texts of their own known as the sutras epics the epic refers to grand long compositions about heroic men and women it also includes stories about gods the two epics the ramayana and the mahabharata give accounts of the social and political conditions of the people of the epic age the two great epics next to the vedas the two great epics the ramayana and the mahabharata are the most famous books in sanskrit literature the ramayana the ramayana had been composed by the great saint valmiki it is the story of prince rama of ayodhya the mahabharata the mahabharata was composed by a great saint vedvyas it is the story of two royal families the kauravas and the pandavas krishna who was the well wisher of the pandavas is the main and central character of this epic in the war of kurukshetra the pandavas defeated the kauravas the bhagavad gita the bhagavad gita contains the essence of the philosophy of the hindu religion it is a theme of the mahabharata it stresses on the performance of karma without caring for the results of actions importance of epics While the Vedas are only for a few learned people the epics appeal to the people of every class the epics give us an insight into the political and social conditions of the people in those times the buddhist literature the buddhist literature gives us a lot of information regarding the period which immediately preceded the accession of bimbisara It helps us in understanding the history of some unknown parts of our country. The Tripitakas. It is the most important literary work of the Buddhists written in Pali 
a couple of centuries after the Buddha. They mainly comprise of three books, the Vinaya Pitaka, the Sut Pitaka and the Abhidhamma Pitaka. The first book tells us about the rules and regulations that monks and nuns should follow in their daily living. The second contains the teachings about moral principles and sayings of the Buddha. The third one is actually an interpretation of the philosophical doctrines contained in the Sutta Pitaka. The Jatakas deal with the previous births of Buddha. About 549 Jataka stories have been collected in this book. From the Jatakas, we can draw a picture of the political, social, economic and religious condition of the people. The Jatakas have been assigned to the 2nd or 3rd century BC. The Jain Literature The Jain Literature also contains a lot of historical information. The Mudra Rakshas of Vishakha Datta gives the story of Chandragupta Maurya and Chanakya. It explains how the Nandas were overthrown and Chandragupta became the king of Magadh. Other literary works The Arthashastra of Kautilya contains a lot of information. It not only gives detailed information regarding the system of administration, but also gives an idea of the social and religious life of the people. Patanjali's Mahabhasya and Parnini's Ashtadhyayi are works on Sanskrit grammar. But there are some occasional references to kings, republics and other political events. Hari Sena was a poet laureate of Samudra Gupta. His works, especially the Prashasti on the Ilahabad pillar inscription, throws a lot of light on the achievements of Samudra Gupta. The dramas of Kalidasa such as Abhigyan Shakuntalam, Mekhdut, Kumara Sambhav, Raghu Vansham, etc., give useful information about the social life of the people. Certain writers took the lives of their royal patrons on the theme of their literary works. Bana Bhatta wrote Harsha Charitra on the life of Harsha Vardhana in prose. This book is useful not only from the point of view of political history, but also for understanding the economic, social and religious life of the people of the 7th century AD. The Raj Tarangini of Kalhana was written in 1149-50 to 50 AD. This is the only work in ancient Indian literature that can be regarded as a historical text in the true sense of the world. Tamil Literature In the Dravidian languages, there are many historical references to the political history of India from the 2nd century AD onwards. The Tamil Sangam works of the 2nd and 3rd centuries gives us useful information about the South Indian civilization. In Kannada and Telugu, there are many poems which give us useful information about the history of the Deccan. Some Tamil works are Kural, the Kural of Thiruvalluvar, bears marks of a high classical standard of Tamil literature. It provides valuable information on the land revenue system of the Cheran and Pandyan rulers. It is said to have been written in the 2nd century AD. It has sometimes been called the Bible of the South. Sila Paddikaram A Tamil epic written in the 2nd century AD. Padiru Pattu A book of 10 verses throwing light on the Cheras. Purana Netru, a Tamil epic which relates to the struggle of the rulers in the middle of the 2nd century BC. The Sangam literature also belongs to this category. Architecture, ancient India achieved great heights in the field of art and architecture. The architecture was at its zenith during the reign of Mauryan rulers, particularly Ashoka the Great. He built a large number of stupas, viharas and monasteries during his reign. Most of the architecture of the Satavahana dynasty was religious, particularly Buddhist. During this era, the monuments built were Buddhist chaityas, stupas and viharas. Chaityas are rock-cut cave structures with massive carved pillars on each side. The chaitya at Karli, Pune, is one such example of rock-cut cave structure. 
The most famous stupa of the Satavahana era is the stupa at Amravati in Andhra Pradesh. It has a large number of sculptures depicting scenes from the life of Buddha. During the period of the Gupta dynasty, temples were built to worship the images of gods and goddesses. These temples were constructed of bricks and stones. A temple has a small central room where the image of the main deity is placed and such a place is known as Garbhagriha. The religious rituals were performed by the priest in the Garbhagriha. The Shikhara has been found on the top of the Garbhagriha to mark it as a temple site. Such an example is the temple of Bhitargao in Uttar Pradesh. Some temples in northern India had an open space for devotees to assemble. Such a space was known as Mandapa. The Dashavatara temple at Deogad, Jhansi, the temple of Bhitargao in Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh and the temple of Sanchi are beautiful examples of architecture of the Gupta dynasty. The Mahabodhi temple at Bodhgaya and the Nalanda University at Nalanda in Bihar were built by the Gupta rulers. The Nalanda University was the first residential university in the entire world. The rulers of South India were great patrons of art and architecture and in this regard, the rulers of Chalukya and the Pallava dynasties were in the forefront. The Chalukya rulers built beautiful stone temples and cave shrines dedicated to Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva at Pattadakal, Aihol and Vatapi. They also built a large number of Buddhist monasteries. The Pallava rulers were also great patrons of art and architecture. They built beautiful temples. The Sho temple at Mahapalipuram too is a famous temple built by the Pallavas. It consists of three shrines, two of which are dedicated to Lord Shiva and one to Lord Vishnu. The Kailash Nathar temple at Kanchipuram is famous for its beautiful sculptured interiors. It was also built during the reign of the Pallavas. Sculpture In the field of sculpture and stone carving, we can see the Indus seals and toys, stone images made during the Gupta period. The Ashoka pillar at Sarnath and many more pieces of sculpture made in the Gandhara style and the images carved in the stone of the Ajanta and Elora caves. Paintings The history of painting is very old. At first, it was started by the early man who painted the walls of the caves in which he lived. The art of painting on the walls attained perfection under the patronage of the Gupta and the Chalukya dynasties. The beautiful paintings on the walls of Ajanta caves depict scenes from the life of Buddha. The paintings done on the walls are known as murals. The colours of paintings are made from minerals and plants which still sustain their glaze. Science, Mathematics and Medicine Indian science has been very advanced since the ancient times. The people of the Indus Valley Civilization were scientifically advanced. Their city planning was based on scientific principles. Strict uniformity in construction of houses, roads, drainage system, standardization of measurements and definite size and shape of bricks found from several sites in India suggest that science was at its zenith. Medicine During the early centuries of ancient India, Charaka and Sushruta were the two famous physicians. Charaka wrote Charaka Samhita and Sushruta wrote Sushruta Samhita. Great physicians like Brahmagupta, Vaghbhat and Dhanvantri also adorned this era. It is believed that physicians and surgeons performed thousands of operations, especially on the reconstruction of the nose. During this period, gastronomy also improved. It laid emphasis on diet and cleanliness. The Yajur Veda mentioned different methods used for diagnosing diseases and prescribing medicines. The Atharva Veda mentioned about economic matters and possessions. Mathematics Aryabhatta was a great mathematician and astronomer. He wrote two famous books, Aryabhatam and Surya Siddhanta. 
he was the first to state that the day and night were caused due to the rotation of the earth on its axis he explained the causes of the lunar and solar eclipses too leelavathi by bhaskar acharya is considered as the first book on modern arithmetic varaha mihira was also a great scientist of the gupta period he proved that the moon revolves around the earth and the earth revolves around the sun brihat samhita deals with the astronomy and mathematics the iron pillar and coins of this period suggest the advancement in metallurgy both iron and bronze were known to them the indian mathematics during this period used the decimal system of numerals it was adopted by the arabs and from them it was learned by the europeans in fact great progress was made in the field of astronomy mathematics and medicine the gupta period was the golden period of indian history it was the most prosperous period and india made marvelous progress in science art literature and in almost all the fields